I've been researching uh, for days, for weeks, about the coronavirus, and I think I'm ready to say something about it. I have my notes. Of course, I've been listening to the news and lots of YouTube videos and looking up on reliable websites like the World Health Organization, even one called Earth.com. Of course, university websites and large hospital websites like the Cleveland Clinic, etc. Anyway, the main thing I want to, uh, the point I want to make is that uh, we gather information and then we have to make our own decision and we can't just believe everything we hear because there's always things we're not being told. Now I'm going to give an example. This is some tooth floss I finished. You would think, okay, there's no more string in it. Let's throw it in the garbage. No. So I open it up and what's in there? A little bead. Beads cost money in stores for art, art supplies, for jewelry making. I've been saving these a long time. I haven't used them yet. There's a lot of them here. See? So I keep saving them. And this reminds me of the truth. You can't just take things on the surface. You have to dig for them. There's an old saying, lies are for free, but the truth has to be stolen. You have to really look for it. Anyway, here we go. People are being told to work at home. That's a good thing. Why don't we try and do that all the time? It lowers carbon emissions. It protects us from pollution because we're not sitting in traffic. And there have been studies that show that the majority of people in modern times that are working at home is equivalent to planting 16 million trees or removing 20,000 vehicles from the road. And also these large offices don't have to maintain such a large building. They, they could have one headquarter office. On the World Health Organization website, it talks about the yearly deaths worldwide from flu. Now there's all different kinds of flu. They took a total number, not just one type. And they said approximately 300,000 to 600,000 yearly worldwide deaths from the flu. Now let's go to the next number. Cardiovascular disease. It's not hundreds of thousands a year that die worldwide. It's 17 million. Okay, let's go to my last number. How many people die worldwide from doctor's error? Error could mean malpractice, mistake, um, negligence. It could mean various things. But doctor's errors worldwide that harm patients. Sometimes it's serious injury, sometimes it's death. More than 138 million. So let's look at these numbers again. Up to 600,000 die yearly from different types of flu worldwide. 17 million deaths per year from cardiovascular disease worldwide. More than 138 million patients harmed by doctor's error yearly worldwide. So we go 600,000, 
seventeen million one hundred thirty eight million so the one that does the most harm according to these very reliable websites is doctor's error so who are we getting instruction from now about the coronavirus from doctors okay most doctors are good it seems to me but there's things we're not being told because they don't want to panic anyone but even so people are panicking for for no reason if more if more deaths occur yearly from cardiovascular disease which is almost totally controllable by, by our own lifestyle. I mean, think about that. 17 million deaths worldwide from cardiovascular disease, something that we could control by, um, by being active, by eating healthy, by you know not smoking, drinking, controlling our weight. And isn't, isn't that something more to be worried about? There are many people who do all these things that they're telling us to do now that do these things all the time, like medical people, like me. You know, if I touch something dirty, I, I know my hand's dirty. I'm going to clean it as soon as possible. If I'm doing a bunch of dirty work and dog care, whatever, in the yard or in the house, I know that during that time, you know, not to not to do any not to touch myself with my hands and my face you know my clothes uh, the surfaces i use you know the where i eat just wait do all your dirty work first and then wash your hands in the health department we used to go teach in schools how to stay healthy and we'd even go into the kindergarten and i would say to them don't stick your hands in your, your fingers, in your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Now, if you have to, because maybe something's stuck in your eye, then you wash your hands first. Then you do what you have to do to get whatever it is off of your eye. So these are very simple things. When I touch doorknobs in public, like, like at the post office, um... <laughs> You know, I'm not going to carry around uh, soap or, or, you know, one of these disinfectant, uh, you know, what, what is it called, the alcohol thing. I'm going to, I'm going to use whatever I can. I'll, I'll, I'll open or close the door. And then I'm going to take my hand and, and I'm going to, you know, just go like this on my jeans over here. You know, get some friction and some heat there. If that's all I could do, that's all I could do. Then I get in my vehicle. If I need to clean my hands further, then I have things in the vehicle. Now, today, um, with all this going on with the news, you know, making people nervous and, and food, food shelves being empty in the stores, my dentist's office calls me. I have an appointment this week. And they said, when you get here for your appointment, do not come in the office. I'm supposed to stay in the parking lot and call them on my phone or knock on the door and they will come out and they will not let me in the office until they check my temperature. So... I, I asked her on the phone, can you explain to me why all this is happening um, with your procedures? Because they also said that for six weeks, they're not going to do any dental treatments. They're only going to finish what they started. For instance, I have a temporary crown. They're going to put on the permanent one that was designed and it's, it's arrived. And of course, if, if the clients have any problems, you know, like they're in pain, they'll take care of that. But otherwise, no dental services at all. Not even teeth cleaning for six weeks. I don't know how they can afford to do that. And the reason she gave me on the phone was, well, we're in your mouth and we have to protect our staff. Now... 
it seems to me that if they're in our mouth digging around and poking and using those sharp instruments, that the people, the ones that are in danger are us because they're, they're breaking the, the gum, you know, with microscopic little scratches with those tools and, and then um, harmful bacteria can enter there. I mean, what could be possibly happening to them? They have gloves on, they have all these, these protective things, they, they have a mask on. I don't understand. Anyway, um, we have to accept what's happening. Uh, there are many people who just don't get the flu. Why aren't they being studied? Why don't they get it? Why are the, why are the people in the blue zones extremely ha healthy, even when they're 100 years old, they're fully functioning, even some of them working, you know, like in a professional job like a doctor or a surgeon. And why do they, they live the longest? There's several places on the globe, and the one we have right here in the United States is in Loma Linda, California, the Seventh-day Adventist. I mean, why don't you, why don't they, they, they know why these people are healthier. They eat a mostly plant food diet. They're very active. They, they have a social life. They help others. They have a spiritual life. So why aren't, why doesn't the media talk about this every single day? Why are the commercials when you're watching news uh, talking about um, medications instead of changing your lifestyle? Why is it on public radio that some of their sponsors are, are wine sellers and craft beer sellers? Why? Something's wrong. Anyway, uh, I'm on Quora a lot and... I'm trying to share knowledge there, and there's been several people who have said to me there that um, lifestyle takes a long time. We, this is an emergency. Uh, we can't expect to improve our immunity overnight or in a few days or in a, a few weeks, and that's not true because once you stop cigarette smoking, drinking alcohol, and eating excess sugar, there is an immediate um, response in the body. Things start getting better immediately, within hours. Think about the difference. If you have a high blood sugar, you know, like 300, and, you know, for a few hours or, or a day, you stop loading yourself with all that sugar, I mean, your blood sugar will come down. It might go to 80 or 90 just in less than a day. And there are things that get improved immediately when you stop smoking also. So it's, it's really hard to, uh, to figure out, you know, what to believe and what not to believe. But we have to really think about it. We have to use examples in nature. You know, why is it that wild animals are healthier than animals, domestic animals that we that we keep as pets. They don't eat as much. They don't find food every day. They are very active. They have to be. They have to hunt their own food. So I mean, it, it's very stressful. Even with everything I study, uh, it, it's stressful because it, it's aggravating. You know, the things they're saying to do on the news, you know, don't visit uh, your loved one. It, um, you might be bringing them germs, but, but yet they want us to go out and vote. I didn't, here's my voting sticker. I didn't vote today. I, I did early voting last week at the library. I, I couldn't imagine going on St. Patrick's Day, um, and plus with all the crowds there, I mean, it's just silly. So what else can I say? Think about everything. Don't uh, don't don't go wild and start buying all kinds of stuff from the stores. They keep telling us that. And something the president said that I that I liked. He said they're telling us not to shake hands. Well, and he said it might be good not to do that anyway all the time, even when we're not in a crisis. You know, there's so many people in the world, very religious people, that don't touch other people. 
especially the opposite gender, and they just do that all the time. They don't shake hands. I mean, what for? And this thing with, you know, uh, sh uh, touching someone else's uh, elbow, isn't that silly? I mean, why can't you connect with them spiritually, intellectually, emotionally? Why does it have to be the body? Let's say that other person, you know, picks their nose or puts their hand in their crotch. And then that same hand, you're going to, you, <laughs> that, and with that same hand, they, um, you know, scratch their elbow or something, or they fix their clothing. So then that, <laughs> that contaminated um, elbow of theirs is going to touch your elbow. And then you, you touch your elbow throughout the day. So now on your hand, you have whatever um, microorganisms were in their nose or in their crotch. And, you know, then, then it's, then it's everywhere here on the table where you eat. I mean, there are microorganisms everywhere. Right now, they're, they're on our faces. They're in the air. We're breathing them in. They're on the table. You know, they're on our pen. They're on the papers. They're everywhere. You know, thank heaven we can't see them because it would be, it would be like a nightmare. It would be so distracting. So there, there's also good bacteria, good microorganisms. You know, there's, there's negative ions, there's positive ions. There's, there's so much going on. And for some reason in nature, it's just it all works out perfectly if we cooperate with nature. I have the most awful smells in my neighborhood from other people's insecticides that they're spraying their lawns. And then whatever they're washing their clothes in and, or using as a fabric softener, the wind blows it over here. And it, it smells so artificial. I, I just don't get it. I, I, guess, I guess they become used to it. It seems normal to them or it smells good to them. But when you don't use those things for a while, it's just, it smells horrible. It smells like, like you're not breathing fresh air. Well, I don't know what else to say. I had to say something about all this. Um, work on your immunity. Uh, it, it feels good to feel good. I mean, those few seconds you're eating something or drinking something that's not good for you, it's just a few seconds. Then the rest of the, the 23 hours in the day, you're, you're feeling bad. It's better to just, you know, push yourself away from that stuff and suffer for 20 minutes after each meal and until you, you know, you feel satiated or sated. And, um, and then feel good for most of the time, the rest of the day and night. You get used to it. If there's anything I forgot, um, let me know.